Hello, so today we are going to paint the six colors of the rainbow, red, yellow, orange, green, blue, and violet. And we're going to use the primary colors to mix the secondary colors. So you're gonna get a small white paper. And the first thing I want you to do is write your name on the paper and the day you have art. Day A, day B, day C. You're going to flip your paper over and fold it in half, long ways. So you can either take the top and fold it down, or I took the bottom and folded it up. And that creates a creased line in the middle that I want you to trace over with your pencil line. And then you're going to use this ruler to break up this space going across into three equal sections. So you're gonna lay this ruler down and look at this side and this side of the ruler if they're equal. And you can see this side is smaller than this side, so I need to scoot the ruler this way until both sides on either side of the ruler are equal. Then you're gonna hold the ruler down and trace from the top of the paper down to the bottom of the paper on one side, and then do the same on the other, keeping your pencil against the ruler so you make a straight line. And when you remove the ruler, you have six equal boxes. So now you're ready to paint. So you're gonna get yourself a placemat to go under your work. You're gonna get the primary colors, a water basin, a sponge, and a paintbrush. The first thing you're gonna do is just paint the primary colors in three boxes. It doesn't matter to me what boxes you paint them in, but what does matter to me is the order you paint them in. I want you to use yellow first because it's nice and bright and clean, and we don't want to mess that up. So dip your paintbrush in the yellow and paint one box in completely and neatly with the yellow paint. Don't leave any white paper poking through. We have the placemat under our work is so when we paint the edges of our paper, we get the paint on the placemat, not the table. So now I'm ready to move to a new color. So I need to rinse my paintbrush off, run it across the teeth at the bottom of the water basin. I need to dry my paintbrush off by pulling it across the sponge. And then I'm gonna do red next. Rinse my paintbrush off. Dry it off. You know you got all the paint out of your paintbrush when you pull it across the sponge and no color comes out of your paintbrush. Then you know you've rinsed it off properly. Okay. So now I have the three primary colors painted. Now I need to make the secondary colors and we're going to mix them on our paper. You always start with the lightest color first. So I'm gonna take some yellow, paint in this box. And you wanna work fairly quickly while the paint is still wet. You don't want to work slow to where the paint starts to dry. Okay, now I'm going to rinse my paintbrush off dry it off and get some red on my paintbrush and mix that around on top of this wet yellow to make orange. Now there are all different kinds of oranges. So if your orange is a little red, that's okay. If your orange is a little yellowish, that's okay. It's okay that your orange doesn't necessarily match the orange of your neighbor. So now I'm gonna take the yellow, paint it again. Nice, clean yellow because I've been rinsing my paintbrush off and I've been drying my paintbrush off. If I wasn't drying my paintbrush off, I'd have this dirty water floating on top of this yellow. Okay, rinse my paintbrush off. Dry my paintbrush off. And I don't need a whole lot of blue to mix with this yellow to make it green. So this is a pretty yellowish green. I think I'll get a little bit more blue. But I'm drying, rinsing and drying before I put my paintbrush back in that blue. I don't wanna mess the blue up for the people use, sharing the paint with me. Rinse my paintbrush off, dry it off. So I'm doing a lot of rinsing and drying. And now I need to make purple. What two colors make purple? Red and blue. Red is the lighter color, so I'm gonna start with red. my paintbrush off, dry it off, 
and then get some blue. All right, and now I have all six colors of the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, blue, green, violet. So you're going to leave your paintbrush in the water basin. You're going to leave your paint tray and your sponge on the table, but you will take your placemat with your painting over to the drying rack to dry, both of them on the drying rack at the same time. Okay, so when you get your painted paper back with your primary and your secondary colors, we're going to start to create a color wheel. And you're going to get a two and a half inch circle. And on the back, in the center of each space, you're gonna trace this circle. So you're gonna trace it six times because there are six colors. And this is gonna go over my name a little bit and that's okay. All right, and you are going to cut each of these circles out. And you might find it easier if you cut, make the paper a little bit smaller and then cut very carefully and slowly on your pencil lines so that you get a very nice, neat circle. So trying to cut these circles out of the large paper might be a little difficult. So cut, cut them into smaller pieces and then very carefully follow the pencil lines of your circle. Okay, you can recycle your scraps. And then you're going to get a large white square paper that you need to write your name. And the day you have art, day A, day B, Z, C, you're going to flip it over and you're going to get a large eight inch circle. You're going to place it in the center of your white square and you're going to lightly trace around it. So you're not going to press real hard with your pencil line, just lightly. So you can probably barely see my circle and that's okay. And you're going to glue down these circles in a color wheel order. And the color wheel order tells us how colors are made. You're gonna take these primary circles and you're gonna place them on the large pencil circle, but you're gonna place them in a triangle formation. So think of a triangle, and there's the top of the triangle and the two bottom sides of the triangle. And I'd like you to glue these circles down where they overlap both sides halfway on the circle line. So this large pencil circle line, you're gonna glue that circle down where it's on both sides, halfway on both sides of the large circle. So I want you to flip over, put a frame of glue on the back, so a circle of glue, and glue it where half of the yellow is inside the large circle and half of the yellow is outside the large circle. Frame of glue, half of the red circles inside the large circle, half of it's outside. Frame of glue, half of the blue circle is inside the large circle and half of it's outside. And then you're going to place your secondary colors in between the primaries that make it. So you need, when you choose the green, you need to think about what two primary colors mixed together make green? Is it red and blue, red and yellow, or blue and yellow? And it's blue and yellow. So you put a circle, a frame of glue on the back, and you glue the green between the two primaries that make green. So this green circle is going to go in between the blue and the yellow because blue and yellow mixed together make green. And when I glue the green circle down, I'm trying to glue it halfway between the blue and yellow circle and halfway inside the large circle and halfway outside the large circle. So now I have the purple circle. What two primary colors make purple? Is it yellow and red or red and blue? And it's red and blue. So I find the center between the red and blue 
and then make the purple be halfway inside the large circle, halfway outside the large circle. And then that just leaves orange, and there's no other space to put orange except between red and yellow, but red and yellow make orange, so this is the correct space. And so now I have created a six part color wheel, six parts because there are six colors. And there is my six part color wheel with the primary and secondary colors showing how the primaries mixed together make each secondary color. All right, so now that you've received your color wheel back and it's completely dry, all the glue is dry, I would like you to take an eraser and erase that very light pencil line that you put for the large circle last time. This was to help us to know where to put each of these smaller circles in the color wheel order. But only do this when the circles are dry. So now you're going to turn each of these circles into a mouse. So we read the story mouse paint and each mouse stepped in primary colors mixed together to make the secondary. So we're going to have six mice um, for our color wheel here. And the way that you start your mouse is you're going to need a head for your mouse and the heads can be anywhere. You can have the heads outside pointing towards the edge of the paper, pointing towards another mouse, pointing towards the center of the paper. It's completely up to you. And so you're just going to do the top of a triangle or the letter V for the mouse's head. Then you're going to give the mouse some ears, curved lines, a nose, and some eyes. So there's the face of your mouse. Then some legs. Don't want to make them too long because then they'll touch the other mouse. And the legs are just straight lines with little circles on the ends. So nothing fancy. And then of course you need a tail. And that's how you turn each one of these circles into a mouse. So you can go through with your pencil and draw each one or once you kind of get one with a pencil, then take your marker, Sharpie marker, make sure it's a nice juicy marker that works. If you get one that's kind of grayish, please give it to me. We have plenty, so I want you to make sure you use one that works. And you're just going to trace over your pencil lines with the Sharpie marker. Now this isn't too hard to draw, so if you think you could draw these without doing them in pencil first, without making a mistake, then you can go ahead and draw the rest of your mice with Sharpie marker. And that's what I'm going to do. Um, but if you're worried about making a mistake, you know you can't erase Sharpie marker, so you want to draw them in pencil first. Neatness matters. If you do your mice real sloppy, when we when people look at the color wheel, they're not going to understand what each circle is. So take your time. Try not to make the mice's um, arms and legs and tails overlap and get all messy into knots. So try to keep them um, separated. All right, I'm all finished. Each circle is turned into a mouse, like the story mouse paint. And there is my finished six part color wheel, three primary colors, three secondary colors. Good job, first grade.